Greetings, this is Ben Murray, the SAS CFO, with a video lesson on the Rule of 40. So the Rule of 40 is a company health metric. It measures the trade-off between profit and growth. So how do we measure this exactly? So the Rule of 40 formula is pretty straightforward. It's growth plus profit equals our Rule of 40 number. It's a simple financial rule of thumb or framework made popular, I believe, by Brad Feld in a post where he heard it from a late-stage investor. Again, the rule of 40 simply adds growth percentage plus profit percentage, and you're deemed healthy or attractive to investors when the sum is greater than 40%. So where do we find our inputs to measure our rule of 40? Well, we're going to look to our SAS P&L. We're going to either take for growth our subscription revenue or our total revenue, and for profit margin, we're going to look to our EBITDA margin. So what is growth exactly for this equation? Growth, we're either, again, using recurring revenue or total revenue. If 80% of your revenue is comprised of recurring revenue, I'd be more inclined to use recurring revenue in this formula. But if you have a mix of revenue streams, recurring revenue, hardware, services, transactional, etc., I'd be more inclined to use total revenue for your growth factor. So what do, you, what do we use for profit margin? Well, we're going to use our EBITDA margin. And again, EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. That's a common financial metric and a good proxy for cash flow. It also puts companies on a common financial basis. So let's take a look at a simple example. In this case, we have our July year-to-date P&L, 2020 versus 2019. For our year-over-year -year revenue growth, I'm using the recurring revenue growth from July year-to-date 20 over July year-to-date 19. In this case, it equates to 14%. For our EBITDA margin, our profit margin, we're using our current year EBITDA margin, which equates to 32%. So we're adding 32% plus 14 to get 46%, which is our rule of 40 number. So when should we start measuring the rule of 40? I like to think that we should start measuring this when we've built out some of the common departments that you see in a SaaS company. For example, if you have services, maybe a services team, a customer success team, uh, FevOps team, R&D sales and marketing. So if, as you start to formalize the structure within your company and you're building out these departments and the headcount and the resources in these departments, it's probably a good time to start measuring the rule of 40. It's going to be somewhere in between this early growth and build and growth established that you should start measuring the rule of 40. So why is this a great, uh, great metric? Well, it gets us to focus on the trade-off between profit and growth because it's very difficult to have both high profit and high growth. So it's going to provide discipline to understand where we land and execute on our financial strategy. If that's high profit then maybe we don't have as much growth and vice versa. And it's also a good metric to assess the overall health of our business for your SaaS executive team as well as outside investors. Thanks for joining me today on the Rule of 40 video lesson. If you'd like to learn more SaaS metrics, check out the sasacademy.com.